This is Texans TV. For over 7 million people, the Houston area is home. Houstonians are proud, rugged, resilient, and diverse. This city is known for many things, energy, medicine, and great food. But there's one that stands above the rest. Welcome to our coverage of Houston Texans football. Touchdown, he's in, he's in. I've been a Houstonian since 1977. My story, like yours and countless others, makes this place what it is. But the pride of Houston goes a hell of a lot deeper than my journey. Take it from some past and present Texans who were raised in the community we all call home. No city has produced more NFL players than Houston. And one of the newest comes from the north edge of town. Well, right here is when he played for the Steelers at Lindsay Lyon Stadium with HFL football. Then that's when he played with the Outlaws on a select team. That's when he played for Atasca Cedar High School. That's when he was in the Nike opening. That's when he played in the Under Armour All-American game. That's when he played for Texas A&M. And that's when he played for the Great Texas. This means a lot. It shows you the growth. It shows the beginning. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't a beginning, he wouldn't have a future. If you don't have a, a start to where you can go out there and, and focus and study and perfect your craft in the beginning, how can you get to this point? Home means a little bit more to Kenyon Green. Picked in the first round of the 2022 NFL Draft, Green's professional career begins ever so close to where his passion for the game started. It's always been football. Football has always been his first love, always. Funny story is like I didn't want him to play football. <laughs> I didn't because he's always been big, so he was like five or six, and he's playing like the seven, eight-year-olds because he was so big he couldn't play with his age group. So they were more experienced than him. I played this peewee league called uh, HFL in the Umbo area. I played there my first year, wasn't so good. And then, I don't know, my second year, it just clicked for me. I fell in love after that. That's the only thing I wanted to do was play football. Once he really started developing and we really started working with him and playing football, he started to get the idea and, you know, just really going after it. And I was like, well, son, he could be one of the great ones. He really wanted to play defense at first. Didn't have a care to play offense at all. Wanted to make sure that, hey, Man, I want to be the one that go out there and tackle the man. Dad, I want to be the one. I said, well, son, you, know, you got to learn both sides of the ball. This is when we played for, he played for the Outlaws with Harvey Williams. And what's crazy about that, we won state two years in a row, seventh grade and eighth grade. And they had a great team. We had a great team. And it was a... <laughs> We did a lot of great stuff, man. This is when he played for the Steelers again, and we actually won the Super Bowl this, uh, this uh, year. It was a young man that he had never played football before in his life. And he, he decided, he said, you know what? I want to try to play football. So we got him on our team. This kid cried day after day because he didn't want to run but we motivate him. And I told King, and I said, this is where you can be a leader. He got out there with him and ran extra laps with him and got him to a point to where he was just like, okay, I can do it now. Through the game of football and a robust support system, Kenyon took strides as a young man. The seeds of leadership were planted early and took very little time to bear fruit. It just taught me how to, you know, stay focused, humble yourself too. You know, each stepping stone, you know, you're gonna go through adversity and um, it's gonna be hard at first, but you know, you just keep going, keep pushing, you know, and uh, you'll get through it for sure. To be great at something, you gotta 
really focus in on and, and perfect your craft. So I think at a young age, Kenyon decided that, hey, I'm gonna focus my energy on football instead of all this other nonsense that's out there in the world. So he really pinpointed, and the thing of it is, the word student of the game, very big when it comes to him because he really studied the game. We may have sparked a fire up under Kenyon for him to you know, start doing stuff, but he carried the torch. A force at Atascacita High School, the Blue Bloods of college football soon came calling. They all wanted Green on their offensive line. A very tough decision awaited. Green stayed close to his roots. I said, son, it's up to you. You gotta make that decision. I understand it's like a marriage. Once you make that decision, you gotta be with it. We're like, once you're there, you're there. You have to work and you have to compete. I mean, that's, that's what it is, you have to compete. You're not gonna be given anything, you have to work for it. I wanna rep my state, you know, in a change in the narrative of, you know, Texas a and And, you know, I feel like we're doing that, we're making it into a powerhouse. You know, uh, in a few years to come, I, I think it'll be a, a natty sitting in there in College Station for sure. Green's football journey wound its way back towards home on the first night of the 2022 NFL Draft. Surrounded by his loved ones in the place he grew up, a dream was realized. They have to pick you, so you don't know when he's going to get drafted, you know. We didn't know if we were going to have a long night, you know. We didn't know if he was going to get, you know, we just don't know. Everybody was just mingling. He was outside talking to somebody and everybody started rushing in. I'm like, what's going on? I just remember everybody laughing, smiling, having a great time. The crazy part, I was talking to, you know, a family friend about the draft. I was like, I feel like I'm about to come up so like somewhere in this five picks that's coming up. And um, after I said that, I'm walking back in the house and I, I got the call. And then he sat here and I looked over his shoulder and I saw like 832 and I'm like, oh. I looked again and he was shaking his head and they were like, that's the call. And when I saw the 832, I, 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 you know, I'm like, I think that's the Texans. But I'm like, you know, I'm like, no, like, that would be too perfect. I mean, it would be too perfect, but. If you looked at it, I stood up and I looked him in the face. And when he did this, I said, oh, I know already. He gonna be right here at home. I was like, God. And then everybody was like screaming and we were like, come down, come oh, down. No. Because they hadn't made the pick yet. They hadn't made the pick, but like, it was just, it was, yeah, it was, it was unreal. For the 15th pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Kenyon Green, Texas A&M. For him to play in Texas, for the Texans, that's a dream come true, to play your whole life out there. Yeah, it's, yeah, never would have thought it. It was, a blessing, you know, just the, the screams and everything, the the excitement, the, the joy of, you know, everybody, you know, it was just a great, great night. You know, it's my hometown, my home city, you know, growing up here, just playing little league football, you know, just spending my, my childhood memories here. That's all I know is, you know, Houston, you know, it's my home base. I'm blessed, you know, you know out of all, you know, cities, you know, just the, the city that, you know, God, you know, let me be in. Texans TV's Homegrown is presented by Reliant. Every athlete faces obstacles throughout their journey. For Texans defensive lineman Ross Blacklock, his story is no different. It was at Elkins High School where Ross learned just how far hard work can take you. Yep. Hey, look. Oh, now look at him and look at me. Got the hair, afro, all that, dog. I was, I was a little big bone. <laughs> yeah, I was a little big bone. It's okay. Man, this is crazy. Time flies, dog. The evolution of Ross is the fact that he learned how to work, and it took a while. He always had a great attitude. He always was happy to go lucky, but the work ethics wasn't there. When we run our conditioning test, he's always one of the last ones starting off. But each year he got better and better because he understood that, you know, if I really want to reach that level that I say I want to reach, I got to start putting work in. And he started putting that extra work in. This field made me a man, dog. This field and that backfield, 
all types of drills and stuff set up, but but man, yeah, we got it in over there, dog. We challenge them to see whether or not they really want to play football. And that's where I try to make them quit. Mm -hmm. You really want to play football. You know, so uh, when they got to that field right there, uh, like again, you're you practicing, you're doing up down. Mm -hmm. And uh, or bear crawls, oh. or foggies, or something. With the help of many at Elkins, Ross started showing signs of his maximum potential on the ball field. Years of hard work and commitment paid off when he was named a high school All-American in his senior season. Just being able to call myself All-American in high school, you know, not a lot of kids can say that. Um, if anybody, this man knows where I was my freshman year, um, how hard I worked just to get there. Um, man, I just kept God first and just did the work and just didn't care what anybody had to say, you know. I realized I had a certain talent, I couldn't let it go to waste, so, you know, the potential's high for anybody, you know, you just gotta reach that ceiling. Nobody walks in the door being All-American. You're gonna have to put some work in to be all anything. What it is to serve as a motivation for the other kids is that you don't have to be perfect right now. You don't have to be that four or five star athlete right now. If you trust the process, let yourself develop physically, mentally, and emotionally, as well as put the work in, I say it can happen. And uh, all I do is point to guys like Ross and just say, hey, that could be you. But you have to make a choice. You have to make a decision. What do you want to be? How much work you want to put in? Because it's not going to happen on his own. You're going to have to do some sacrifices. Thompson. Pressure to Thompson gets sacked. Ross Blacklock there for the sack. A dominant defensive lineman at TCU, Ross entered the 2020 NFL Draft. With his dreams on the horizon, waited for his name to be called. In round two, Blacklock's story came full circle in the second round when his hometown team drafted him. Not a lot of guys can go back home and say, yeah, I played for my hometown team. I grew up a Texas fan my whole life. Never, ever thought I would be able to be a Texan, but each and every day I wake up, thank God that I'm here. Houston to his core, Ross is living his dream out in front of the community that raised him. Texans trying to get home to the quarterback, and Ross Blacklock strips the ball out. If there's one thing for certain, he'll never forget where he came from. What's up? Hey. Howdy. Hey. Hey, what's up? Good to see you. You lost that baby fat. Come on. Right? <laughs> oh, they slimmed up. <laughs> What's up, big dog? <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. Good to see Dude, you. You ain't got bigger, bro. When he got drafted, that's the first time I'd watched the draft from the beginning to the end, especially when he went to the Texans. Our kids were just fired up because here's a, a kid that was drafted by the Texans, playing at their hometown professional team, and it's just instant motivation. It's really good for the Texan organization as well as not just Elkins, but every kid in this area to see that a kid from your hometown can actually make it to the highest level. Houston's everything. Houston is home, Houston's family. It means the world to me just to be able to come back and play. Obviously for my team, my city, it means so much more to me than football. Houston is my heartbeat. Houston will always be with me no matter where I'm at. I love this city. The city's done good by me and I always want to do good by it. H-Town, we need you as our home field advantage. Join us at NRG Stadium this fall. Visit HoustonTexans.com slash tickets. Hey, right hand, there it is. Right hand, there it is. It's all right here. You can do whatever you want. If you believe you can. It's going good. It's just as hot as I thought it was going to be. 15 miles west of NRG Stadium, 100 local kids head to Crump Stadium in Aleaf to play some football. When one-on-ones come, I'm gonna find you, all right? It's a full circle moment for new Texan, Obanaya Okoronkwo. Obo is hosting his first ever camp in his hometown. We're gonna be doing some position drills, some agility drills, but uh, most importantly, we're gonna be having a lot of fun. Hello. <laughs> It feels amazing to be able to give back to these kids and you know just be a positive role model for them. Now that I'm here, I feel like I, I, I want to be able to empower kids to feel like they could be in this position. I look light, but we heavy though. <laughs> a Super Bowl champion last year with the Rams, Oboes found team success at the very highest level. But nothing beats teaching the game in your own backyard. Just like that? 
That's all? That's all right there? <laughs> None of that matters if you don't give back to your community, you know? I feel like that should be top of the list for every athlete, you know, coming out of their city, you know? Uh, the city supports you, you know, you gotta support the city. Just a few years back, Oboe starred on this field for Aleaf Taylor High School. Oboe, <laughs> golly man, that kid, we met him, I guess he got on campus his freshman year, so he's about 14 years old. He's maybe was 170 pounds, dripping wet. Um, he had a smile. He was always laughing, he was joking around. The biggest thing what we do is we, we try to make sure we recruit kids out of the hallway. And Oboe had these really, really long arms. You know, so you're looking at this kid, like, God, he's long. You know, I bet, I bet he could play some football. So we just went up to him and was like, hey man, you're interested in playing football? And we got him out there and the rest is kind of history. You saw his initial burst off the ball and you're just like, oh my God, we can do something with this kid. And you could really see the steps that he did. And then of course, throughout that time, you could really see how Oboe grew. His junior year is when the light just came on. One thing about Oboe is he's got so much God-given ability. You know, like with his length, his speed, and his motor. Coaches can take credit for it, but let's be real. You know, like that's that's God given. Like he just has a motor like no other. You could really see even from day one, Obo was never scared. And it was something that was a real attribute to Aleph Taylor and just Aleph in general, that he was always ready to push through and and really basically never back down to anyone or anybody. Tight to the line, tight to the cones, tight to the cones. Tight to the cones, finish through, finish through, finish through. There you go, that's a perfect rep. That's a perfect rep. The neat thing is now he's home. And when I tell you this, I mean it like it couldn't happen to a better kid. Like Oboe is just a great kid. Doesn't need the shine, doesn't need all the attention, but he gets it because again, he's got such a, a great personality and people are drawn to him, man. He's just, a, he's just, he's just Oboe. What's your message to the kids? Um, you know, um, whatever you want to do, it's possible. You know, you can dream big, you have to work hard too. It, it is full circle. And it's good to see that no matter what, he had a dream and he was able to, to get there because I think Obo is an example that you can. He did have to work. There's some times, I guarantee you, you ask him, he, he was not very happy with me after a workout because, you know, I'd have to push him that hard because I knew that he had it in him to be great. He just needed to pull it out of himself. There you go, there you go, that looks good. Break. There you go, behind, 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 behind. Right hand. Right hand. Right hand. Right hand. Right hand. Right hand. Half on three. One, two, three. Half half one. One. H Town, we need you as our home field advantage. Join us at NRG Stadium this fall. Visit HoustonTexans.com slash tickets. Texans TV's Homegrown is presented by Reliant. You don't always get to choose where you grow up. You certainly don't get to choose who drafts you in the NFL. Houston native Earl Mitchell is finally able to choose where to settle down after a decade in the league. That place is always home. Now retired, Earl often revisits the field where it all began. We're back, man. This is where it all started for you, huh? Yeah, man. This is really nice to be back. I'm getting a lot of a lot of great memories. So, these guys pump out state titles on the reg, but you were a part of the first state title team here. Yeah, man. 2003. What was that like? Uh, it was it was a really cool experience for me. I got to be a part of, you know, a great team. You know, I learned a lot. It was just all about discipline and technique and a whole lot of effort. But for them to bring me up, and that was my first time like getting the varsity jersey, and I remember being the, one of the few sophomores on that team. It was really special just to get that opportunity because we had we had such a talented team, and that was just a really hard team to be on. What do you first remember about playing football here, though, coming out of the tunnel or coming out of wherever? What was it like, your first memory? My first memory, really just seeing the stadium. Um, you know, we had two separate campuses, and I remember the first time uh, I got a chance to you know, practice with the varsity, and uh, this was my first time seeing the stadium, and I didn't realize that that this is what I was going to be doing for the you know next couple of years of my life. But yeah, just just seeing the stadium, the roar of the crowd, and just I remember the excitement. Okay, playing at a place like this, what is Friday like? Not Friday night, but what is Friday like here at North Shore? 
Yeah, it's, it's excitement. You wake up in the morning and you're, you're so excited to just, you know, to, to do something special that day. And I know when I was in high school, I just remember how, you know, just, just chill, just getting ready for that entire day. And that night was, uh, you know, always gonna be really special. Um, especially here, the fans were always on your side. That was just a big part of it, just the entire experience where everybody was just really happy to be a part of the time on the tradition where we just, we won most of our games. <laughs> A lot of gold footballs in that trophy case, man. A lot of them, yeah. A lot of state championships, and you know, this is the tradition right here. Um, yeah, a lot of things that these kids can be proud of, and they get to see it every day when they walk through the doors here. These kids, you know, you need something to stand on and uh, something to like hold yourselves uh, accountable to. So I remember thinking the very first time we got to hold that trophy, and just thinking about how important it would be for us for the years moving forward for us to get another one. And you know, these kids, they get a chance, they get to see that, and they they see the pictures on the wall, and they want the same thing. And there's a lot of history and stories behind a lot of great players, and I'm sure they want the same for themselves. Your career starts here. You have stops in Miami, San Francisco, meaningful contributor in both of those places. But you come back to Houston, why? Because this is home. Um, I, I love it here. I'm born and raised here. And um, you know, this is you know, where I want to spend my life. And, uh, and I never took it for granted. Being drafted here, it meant something to me. And I knew that for the rest of my life that I'll be able to give back and work in the community. And I'm extremely thankful just to be a part of the team in that aspect. Why is Houston home? Houston is family, uh, it's great food, it's great football, and you know there's a lot of history here, and you know I love just being a part of it. He's going to go down. Alex Smith sacked by Earl Mitchell, and he does the thunder stop celebration. There's so much history at where I grew up, and you know there's traditions when it comes to the pride that that we have here and the players that I got to play against that I knew were from Texas. It's one of those things, you, you get to see that person and you get to be proud of them. We're different out here. You know, when I go to college in Arizona, meet people from Texas and you know, they, they come up to me, they shake my hand and they make you feel welcome. And that was ultimately the biggest difference. What I saw with us Texas players, it's so easy to be proud when you get all of those wrapped in one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.